dear participants and facilitators of the accession of Commonwealth Universities Workshop on grant writing skills for early career researchers of the University of Calabar. Participants from other universities in the Commonwealth, I bring you warm greetings from the management, staff, and students of the University of Calabar. Calabar Cross River State, Nigeria. I want to, in particular, express my gratitude to the Association of the Commonwealth Universities for providing us with this wonderful opportunity and for making it possible that we got the grants for this workshop. Especially so that we know that the session has about 500 universities. So the competition was stiff. Thank you, the leadership of the Association of Commonwealth of Universities. We hope to have more partnership with you in the near future. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, no doubt the grant application was an odious tax on our part. As a university, even as the selection procedure was a part of ACU. The excitement shown by participants in this workshop is a testimony of the goodwill that our university, the University of Calabar is known for. When we set out for this workshop, we had thought of having about 100 or 200 people registered. But today we have more than 1,000 people. In fact, we have 1,100 registered participants distributed across 200 universities and institutes in the world. The workshop, which we thought was a University of Calabar workshop for upcoming academics and research researchers of UNICAL has become a global workshop in scope. We are indeed very impressive with the attendance. I therefore use this opportunity to advise and encourage our participants to take this advantage, this exercise and this workshop very seriously because it will help in increasing and developing their skill, grant writing skill. The importance of research and the consequent benefits of this workshop cannot be emphasized, especially so that as academics and researchers, we need to go up all out to send our proposals and to apply for funds to enable us carry out our researches. Research funds are accessible through grants applications. In the midst of several uncompetitive applications, it takes skills to make your application fundable. There are several donors and grant sources in the world. These donors include governments, foundations, and organizations. The World Bank, for instance, has funded thousands of development projects since 1947. But for you to assess grants, you need to be able to write fundable proposals. And that is indeed the essence of this workshop. The University of Calabar is one of Africa's finest universities established about 47 years ago. 
The university is outstanding in the areas of medicine, science, education, research, arts, and humanities. I can assure you that our resource persons are very seasoned academics with competitive research track records. The university is located in a very serene city of Calabar, the first capital of Nigeria and the capital of a beautiful state, Cross River State. It is the home of hospitality, home of entertainment and leisure. Calabar is known globally for its December annual carnival, which is one of the best carnivals in the world. I want to use this wonderful opportunity to invite all of you to our great city, especially this year's December, to witness the serene environment of our states and our wonderful Calabar Carnival. I will not end this address without condoling with the people and government of the United Kingdom on the demise of a great woman, a great monarch, a queen who held her way for 70 years. Our hearts from management, staff and students of the University of Calabar are indeed with the people of the United Kingdom and especially the immediate family of the queen. We pray that her soul find an everlasting place with her creator. Finally, I want to welcome you all to this online workshop hosted by our University of Calabar in conjunction with the accession of Commonwealth of Universities. I wish you a very fruitful interaction and I wish you the very best. Thank you for joining. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, <laughs> Chancellor, for that heartwarming welcome address. So we'll hand over the microphone now to Professor Mbe Inja. Okay. Um, yeah, just before then, I would like to do a few, I'd like to do a few um, introduction or what we call climate setting. So once again, my name is Juliet Inyang. I'm one of the facilitators and um, technical persons for this workshop. Okay. So there are just a few ground rules or expectations that we expect from um, participants and all of you wonderful, wonderful people who are joining this workshop right now. In a few minutes, I'll share my screen so that we can know what these expectations are. Thank you. Okay, so welcome once again to this three-day online early career research workshop on grant writing skills. I believe you can see my screen. Please, if you can't see my screen, can you just give me a thumbs up or just say yes in the chat so that I know that we are all seeing the screen? 
and um if you if you would like we'd also want to meet you can you say where you're joining us from so my name is Juliet. I'm joining from Calabar. Can you say where you're joining us from? Can we meet you? Just use the chat, use the chat box, just your name and maybe your institution. Oh, great, Silvanus, thank you so much. I can see your response, yes. Okay. So you just tell us where you're joining us from. We'd like to meet you. We'd like to know how diverse this group is. Oh, Ibadan, Ibad okay, that's um, anonymous attendee. <laughs> Okay, Esther Umahi, where are you joining us from? Okay, so we'd just like to meet you. Oh, we have people from Kano, we have Taraba, we have Port Harcourt. Interesting. Oh, awesome. Abakiliki, that's Patrick. You're welcome, Patrick. Okay. Okay, you can see Calabar, we can see Taraba, we can see... Ah, somebody said his chat is disabled. I don't know why that's happening. Maybe you may want to check your setting because I mean, every participant can chat. Okay, Calabar. Okay, yeah, but I mean, you, you, can, you can still use the box you're using right now because I can see your, your message. Czech Republic. Oh, thank you, Zuha, for joining. Hi, Dr. Boom, I see you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Simon from Uganda, you're welcome. Dr. Basi Ia Ize from Kalava, you're welcome. We have Bukhari, we have Czech Republic, we have, oh my God, this is awesome. So welcome everyone. All right, so while that is going on, um, it would be nice for us to just have a few instructions, okay? Um, already, well, this is a webinar and automatically your microphones are off, I believe, but then, we would encourage that you keep your microphone still muted unless you're invited to unmute, okay? And um, could we please respect other participants' privacy? So it's highly encouraged that we avoid private chatting with participants. So this session is recorded. Um, if you would not like to appear in a recording, it's advised that you turn off your video so that, um, you know, that's if you're not giving consent to be recorded. If you have questions, I mean, there's a Q&A box, which we are already using. That is awesome. You can use that box, ask your questions, or use the raise hand emoji, and you would be unmuted or invited to speak. Okay, I believe that is few. I mean, that is um, understood, rather. So let's meet the facilitators of this awesome workshop. I'm sure you're eager to meet them like a yam. <laughs> are we eager to meet them please say yes in the chat just say yes let's know that you are eager to meet these wonderful people that we have today to deliver the wealth of experience wealth of knowledge today let's see i'm going to introduce them if we have up to 20 yes in chat up to 20 i need 20 yes okay i can see one two three four five six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, we need 10 more yeses. 11. Okay, 12, 13, 14, 15, five more yes to go. <laughs> okay, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. All right. So Charles Ayobola gave us the 20th yes, and we have the yes coming. Oh, okay. So that is a very big yes. So let's meet our participants then. Okay. Our facilitators rather. All right, great. So first on the list is Professor. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I don't know, I've lost my, oh great, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I lost my screen for a bit. Okay, first on the list is Professor Mbe Ego Nja. He's a professor of statistics from the University of Calabar, Nigeria. Professor Mbe was, uh, was also the former deputy director in the direct, Directorate of Research and Development University of Calabar. He is a fellow of the Royal Statistical Society in London. 
Um, he has a PhD from the University of Ibadan, a PhD in statistics, an MS in statistics, UNICAL, and a BSc in mathematics from the University of Jos, Nigeria, as well as an MBA from the University of Calabar. Professor Nja has worked consistently in three different universities in Nigeria, and even outside Nigeria, actually, <laughs> as well as the uh, Polytechnic in Calabar. He's a recipient of several conferences and travel grants, including the JH, the JH West Grants United Kingdom, that was in 20, 2007, the Jolie Phonics um, Research Grants in the UK in 2015, Oregon Health and Science University Grant in 2010, and Fund Grant in 2010, and even beyond that, and so many others. Professor Nja has taught the, the, the process, the techniques of research writing, proposal writing to so many students. We can't even quantify them right to meet in this. Next on the list is no and Professor Regina. So Professor Regina of Public Health Nutrition from the University of Calabar, Nigeria. She is the Deputy Dean, Faculty of Allied Medical Sciences, University of Calabar. She is also, um, okay, she also has um, the, um, a PhD in Public Health Nutrition from the University of Calabar, an MSc in Human Nutrition, University of Ibadan, a BSc in Human Nutrition, University of Ibadan, and certificate statistics and research methods from Leeds and Edgem um, Motwan Diaro published over 80 research papers in reputable journals. I mean, just give it a Google search and confirm that. Like we'll say, go and verify. <laughs> okay, she's one of the leading experts in evidence synthesis and child health globally. And um, you would also like to know that she's a recipient of several conference and travel grants, including Ted Fawn, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, DFID Research for Development, and so many others. Professor Edgeworth, we are so happy to have you here in the program. Ah, okay. I think that's just it for the two of them, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's move on then. Finally, you get to meet the person who is speaking. And that is Juliet John Eang. Um, Juliet, that's myself. I'm a lecturer from the Department of Marketing, University of Calabar, Nigeria. I'm a researcher, a data scientist, and a program management expert. So I have a PhD in view, an MSc from marketing, BSc in marketing, University of Calabar, as well as a certificate in social entrepreneurship from the University of Connecticut in the USA. Juliet is one person who promotes capacity building opportunities and digital skills development for young people and new researchers. Um, mostly do that through my organization, Academic High for African Scholars. Yeah, and I'm um, talking about research grants as well. I have received several grants and awards such as um, the Summer Institutes in Computational Social Sciences in Paris 2022, ECOWAS, um, Center for Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency Grant, the GDN International Youth Research Competition Grant in 2019 in Germany, the World Economic Forum in Geneva 2016, Unical Study Fellowship Award, Clute Institute Best Paper Award, um, that was in New York, and I am also an awardee and a member of the Ashoka Youth Venturer from 2012 and several others. So what can we say after seeing all of these? We can just say welcome. We hope that you do have a pleasant learning experience. Thank you so much.
Okay, so next on the agenda for today is the first session, which is titled Object of Grant Writing. I'm going to share my screen right now so that we can listen to Professor Mbeinger as he takes that session. Please be patient. Once again, welcome. Uh, I've already been introduced. My name is Mbe Nja. At this point, we shall be looking at the object of grant writing. Object of grant writing. Precisely, we shall take a look at the research proposal. Looking at the research proposal, we by this time already know that what makes an institution thick or an individual thick is his or her level of research productivity. What actually makes a difference between one lecturer and the other in the department is your research productivity. And on that note, we will start from the cradle, talking about research, research proposal, and all of that. Let's start with a basic question. What is research? In fact, maybe on a lighter note, somebody has said, research is search and search again search and search again. There are several definitions. We'll just take a few of them and draw a line somewhere. A careful study of a subject in order to discover new facts or information about it. That's what research is about. The, 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 the primary drive is to discover something new, a careful study, and then look at the word careful, carefully. You don't rush over it. You take some good time to study a subject. And you can see here that research has to do with focus, as we'll see later. Take a particular subject, carefully study it with the intent to discover new facts or information. If you miss this, then you are not actually researching. If you miss the fact of discovery, another definition which is uh, quite close to that is that research is any form of disciplined inquiry that aims to contribute to a body of knowledge or theory. Disciplined inquiry 
that aims to contribute. So there must be some contribution, small or big, at the end of a research exercise. So, and, and, and that is why in many cases, people do a research, spend time, spend money, and it doesn't fly because the elements of contribution to knowledge is not there. What is research? The third definition, research can also be said to be a process of arriving at a dependable solution to societal problems through plan and systematic collection, analysis, and interpretation of data. Okay, a process of arriving at a dependable solution to societal problems. In other words, a research is supposed to address problems in society. Otherwise, why do we spend money or why do we seek for, uh, why do we look for grants if a problem is not solved at the end of the day? Now, but what makes it a research is that even in solving a societal problem, we package together, okay, what we refer to as systematic collection, analysis, and interpretation of data. Whatever the definition, research must have an impact. And looking at even the three definitions um, we went through, there is this string that passes across all of them innovation, discovery. There must be something new in a research before uh, we can say this is a good research. But the summary of it all is that a research must produce an impact. The beneficial application of research to achieve social, economic, environmental, or cultural uh, outcomes. There must be an impact at the end of the day. Uh, if if I, uh, for instance, I undertake a research um, on the looking for a solution or a drug to cure HIV, you will see if this research is successfully conducted at the end of the day, it must impact. That is to say, we should be able to provide a solution to the problem we set out to solve in the first place. What is a research proposal? This is like moving to the second step from research to research proposal. I believe at this point that we understand what a research is. A research proposal is a concise and coherent summary of your proposed research. You can immediately see a permutation here. Research proposal is derived from proposed research. The combination permutation of these two words, research proposal, in other words, if I interchange research with proposal, I have proposed research. So a research proposal is a concise and coherent summary of your proposal, what you intend to research about. You first provide a proposal for it. And in other words, a research proposal is a subset of the total research. It sets out the central issues or questions that you intend to address. The research proposal is an initial set of ideas for a research study, which are supported by literature review or a pilot study. Yes, a research proposal for it to be meaningful. And in several cases, is usually supported by a pilot study. A pilot study is 
is is is is a, is a study at a smaller scale that is intended to um, have a preview or a peep into the actual research, which is on a larger scale. The pilot study will reveal inherent prob problems associated with the real study. So a research proposal is an initial set of ideas uh, for a research study or for the main study that we are um, uh, intending to do. A research proposal should be concise. What this means is that you have to put your ideas together in a manner that it doesn't take long for somebody to understand what you intend to do. It must address the question of what you plan to achieve, why you want to achieve it, and how you are going to do it. What you plan to achieve is like um, uh, you are bathing the, pro the, 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 the proposal or, 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 or the, 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 the study. What you intend, what you plan to achieve must be well conceived. Then number two, what you want to achieve. What you want to achieve is like the objective of the proposal. Then how you are going to do it will reveal the capacity inherent in you as a researcher. So putting this together, we see capacity here. In fact, number one says what you plan to achieve, which should capture the problem you intend to solve. So a research proposal should be concise and must address these uh, questions. Talking about quality of research proposal, we have to look at these points now to address quality of research proposal. Not only on the quality of your proposed project, but also on the quality of your proposed writing. Yes, the writing quality is very important because you can have a wonderful, um, research idea, but if you are unable to put them down, uh, you are un unable to present uh, a, a quality, to present some quality uh, write up, it will not fly. A poorly written proposal runs the risk of rejection. So what we are saying is that for your project, uh, for your proposal, to be sellable, the quality of writing must be firmly addressed. The quality of writing, let me tell us also at this point that for you to achieve this, you should go through your proposal that you have put down over and over because some errors they have a capacity to sleep. But if you spend time to go through over and over, you'll be able to spot out those errors. Proposal writing should therefore embrace these four Cs. The first C is a uh, concision. I've already talked about this. You have to be concise. You have to be coherent. By coherence here, we mean that the ideas must flow sequentially. You must be logical in your presentation. That is actually a sign of mature writing. It also tells about your level of um, um, your, your, your maturity as an academic. Number three C 
is that you must be clear. There should be no ambiguity. In other words, um, or rather, what that means is that don't try to use semantics or or or, or, or vulgar, I know, or bulky uh, language to confuse any anyone. Try to be clear. Try to be simple and be straightforward. And most importantly, you must be compelling. You must be persuasive in capturing the problem you want to solve. Two people can present the same problem, but one is compelling and the other is not. So learn the art of compelling your donor to accept your proposal. Now, essential components of research proposal, the title, we, talk, we talked about being concise, being clear, being uh, compelling. All these can be from the title. The title you see, or it don't exist, and it wants to read more. There is a title also that somebody sees and the interest ends right there. Number two, the summary your proposal should capture a summary so that if your donor um, does not have the luxury of time, going through that summary is like going through the entire proposal. Then we have the introduction or the background. This introduction and background should capture the problem that you want to solve. The methods is, um, Another component of a research proposal, methods or methodology, as some people call it, it should capture how you intend to go about it. If there are samples to be considered, you have to show us the methods of sampling and then the expected results. Yes, the what you expected because we are the proposal stage. The what, uh, so we have to have an idea, speak to what we intend to uh, achieve, and then the references. Tips on writing your research proposal. Start with a firm introduction. Don't beat about the bush. And your Introduction should have a hook. Let me give us an example. Maybe there's an outbreak of cholera in your locality or somewhere, and you want to capture, you, you, you want to come up with a proposal, a research proposal to address this. You take your statistics about how many people probably have died. If it is a serious epidemic, let's say 200 people have died within the space of 10 days, you can reduce your statistics to say, as I talk to you now, or as you are reading this proposal, five people die every minute, or five people have died within the space uh, with which you're reading this proposal. That's how to get the hook. Now, state the problem very clearly after the introduction. Then you propose solutions. It is this solution that will compel your donor. Your solution should be something realistic. Don't pro prefer a solution that your donor feels that no, this is not achievable. Include a schedule and a budget. Later, we'll talk about budgeting. But for now, let me say that your budget should be realistic. Your budget should capture the essence. Then there should be a wrap up with the conclusion. Like I said earlier, 
he did your work, go through it again and again, read your work. But let me also capture, before you click the button to submit, you should be able to look somewhere down at the footnotes, the donor's contact. You, may, you make a call, try to reach your donor and ask questions where necessary. Because sometimes people have written their projects, I mean, their proposals, of course. But when you get in touch with the donor, you'll be able, or the call presenters, you'll be able to address this. Now, there are some common mistakes associated with proposal writing. Number one, failure to provide the proper context to frame the research question. A research question should not arise from the blues. It should come from a context. And number two, failure to delimit the boundary conditions for your research. Uh, le let me give an example here. There is a call for a proposal, say, on renewable energy. And the donor or the caller is expecting that this project should run, say, between uh, your country or, say, between Nigeria and one or two other West African countries to be able to capture those where you don't understand the boundaries, the extent of coverage, please put a call across to the donors. Then failure to cite landmark studies. This is very crucial. Do not fail. And that is why literature review is very important. Number four, failure to accurately present the theoretical and empirical contributions of other researchers. Just very close to what we have just looked at. Number five, failure to stay focused on the research question. Don't drift. Stay on your research question. Stay on the objective. Now, number six, failure to develop a coherent and persuasive argument for the proposed research. If you fail to provide a persuasive argument, you are talking about skills. These things I'm mentioning require skills. Too much of details too much of details on minor issues should be avoided. At the same time, you should uh, spend, rather the details should address major issues, not minor issues. And then too much perambulating without clear forward movement will run down your proposal. You should be clear in your movements you should not be dancing around. Number nine, too many citation lapses and incorrect references. This can be avoided if you go through your proposal again and again to do proper editing. Number 10, too long or too short a proposal. A proposal should not be too long. It should also not be too short, it should capture the essence. And number 11, failure to adhere to specified format. Where you are in doubt, make, I mean, call the contacts on the call, but you should adhere to the requirements. Key characteristics, 
important to individual research productivity. Um, talking about this, we have socialization, motivation, content, content knowledge, basic and advanced research skills, simultaneous projects, orientation, autonomy, and commitment, then work habits. I just, because of time, I'll speak to, to, uh, to a few of these. Socialization, you should be able to understand the values, the norms and the expectations of the donors, okay? You should also understand the, 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 the sanctions affecting established faculty. For this reason, before you submit your proposal or before you even begin to write, take some time to investigate the background, the history of the donors. Because if you do this, even your donors will be impressed that you are in tune with the vision, with the culture of the of the of, of the of the proposal or of the, the the vision behind the donors why they are doing what they are doing you should be on the same page with them then there has to be a motivation you should be driven to explore understand and follow one's own ideas that is your own ideas that motivated you from the beginning. You should be able to keep to these and address them maturely. Content, knowledge. You should have a firm grasp of what you're talking about. Take somebody in one field, but is writing a proposal in a field that is completely strange. This is a clear case of one who does not have a firm grasp of the content knowledge, and this will affect your proposal. So as much as possible, write your proposals in areas that you have strength, areas that you can, you can defend, you can talk like an authority. Basic and advanced research skills, very, very important. You should be comfortable with your statistics, study design, data collection. These are basic rudiments of research. But at some point, the, 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 the analysis may require some more expertise. Feel free to contact experts at such points. Then simultaneous projects don't carry too many at the same time. In fact, you should be able, you should be focused, engaged in engaging in multiple projects is not advisable. You should be focused, take one project at a time. Let us continue so that we can beat the time. I hope that you must have benefited from this uh, interaction. I'd like to acknowledge a few persons um, who made a contribution to this. We looked at the Step B sensitization proposal development workshop uh, 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 findings. We also look at uh, a guide to statistics and her research by Ejemod Mwadiaro and a few others. Uh, we have some other presenters. And so at this point, I will vacate the stage.
All right. Thank you very much, Professor, for that. Um, as you were presenting this wonderful lecture, we had lots of questions in the chat, in the Q&A box. Um, but before I take those questions, please, I understand that the chat session is, uh, section is disabled at the moment. So that's just a technical issue. We are going to rectify that. But fortunately, there is a Q&A box where you can post your questions. Feel free to use the box because we are receiving all the feedback that you're sending in that box. I hope that is fine. So if you have questions, if you have comments, if you have complaints, feel free to use the Q&A box. It serves the same purpose as the chat box. All right. Um, so Professor Mbe, I'm just gonna read out a few questions that okay. the participants had posed while you were presenting, while okay. you were making your presentation. The first question, okay, we have a question that just came in now from Tope Olubodun. It says, how long should a proposal be? Like what length is adequate? He wants to know what length is adequate for a proposal. What would you advise? Okay. Um, actually, there are no hard and fast rules. As to say, there has to be one page or two or three or four or five. But sometimes it depends on the call. There are some studies that are very involving. And for such studies, the proposal may be a little bit longer. In fact, there are some um, international or joint proposal writing. Okay, when it comes to that, where you have several consortia pulled together to write a proposal, such proposals are usually um, longer than others because in such cases, even the budget alone, okay, is enormous. It's long. And then uh, there are some proposals that are so straightforward to address a simple or a particular issue. And obviously, such proposals may not be so long. You feel it as a researcher. The important thing is to capture the essential components which we highlighted here. Okay, let me say you are talking about the introduction. If you go straight to the point, because that introduction should be able to capture the background, um, the problem you want to solve, you go straight to the point, you will discover that um, it doesn't have to be too lengthy. Or you are talking about methodology. If your methodology involves um, sampling, you go straight to the point and um, uh, that methodology should also be able to capture your um, data analytic, I mean, uh, data analysis techniques. Once you have captured the basic elements, you may not, you may not bother again about the length, the brevity of your proposal, but make sure the essential ingredients are captured. That, that is what I think I'll say for now. Okay, Thank another you. question is, what is the difference between concept notes and research or grant proposal? Someone wants to talk about the research or grant proposal. Yeah. We, have, we actually have lots of questions, so if mm. we can make the responses so this concise, okay. that would help, so we can take as many questions. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yeah, in a way, one would think that probably there is no, but the concept note usually um, uh, precedes a, a, a research, I mean, a, a call. When there is a call for submission of proposals, um, the, the concept note is the first stage for many calls. That concept note will decide, okay, whether you move to the next stage, that is a full proposal. The concept note is an initial proposal, kind of. You present, you forward to the caller. They will see if you have a capacity to move to the next stage. 
So in a way, it is a proposal, but it's not a full proposal. So, um, so like I said, some proposal will begin with the concept note, and then depending on uh, your impression, the impression by the uh, colors, they can move you to the second stage, which will now um, take the full proposal. Okay. Thank you. Uh, expected results in research grant writing, written in present tense or past tense? Expected results. Expected results. What do you mean by written in, in, uh, in past tense or present tense? Do you, do you want to say, it is usually written as expected results. Expected means what you hope to achieve at the end of the research. Maybe I don't understand the question very well, but this is how it is usually put, expected results. Okay, um, how deep can someone go in writing literature review during proposal? Maybe we'll leave that question for the literature review section because yes. there's, a, there's a full section, uh, session for that, literature okay. review, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna share the program of events soon so we can see what to expect from the entire workshop. Um, so I'm just gonna take another question. If you have questions on literature review, oh, please just be patient, you would have a lot of information on that. Um, okay, do we have specific formats for research proposal? Like what's the minimum number of, and what's the minimum number of literature for PhD research proposal? Do we have specific formats for research proposal? Okay, but so someone is asking about PhD research proposal. So I don't know, are we talking about PhD research proposal or for grant writing? We are talking about grant writing proposals. Yeah, I mean, a grant uh, attracting proposal. So proposals that have to do with grants. I know there are some PhDs, uh, PhD proposals too that would eventually um, attract grants. Yeah, okay, but, but, but there is no universal format for PhD research proposal some institutions i mean different institutions um have their different formats okay great so um there's no specific formats just stick to the format specified by the um, agency or the body or the institution yeah, i hope yes. that is clear mm -hmm. okay and then this is gonna be the last question can you talk about timelines during proposal writings timelines Timeline during proposal writing. They are also usually uh, captured in the call. Yeah, for instance, the, the, a call can, a call would normally come up with the expected time to cover the, the study. It can be three months, can be six months, some one year, and some two, three years, and so on. It depends. So timelines, um, uh, um, and, and, and many calls to specify. They tell you that maybe this number of weeks is for this, one month is for this, three months is for this. But if, it, if, if, the, if the, the time schedule is not specified, then you bring out your skills as a researcher to um, uh, specify uh, timelines. Okay, thank you very much. So I've also seen a lot of other questions, but sorry for the sake of time, we will not be able to take all the questions because some of the questions I have not read, yeah. some of the questions I have not read are actually covered in other lectures to come. So please, if I have not read out your question, do not take it personal. Um, if you feel like it's not also been covered in other sessions, please feel free to re-ask your questions again, okay? But for the sake of time, we have to move on, all right? Um, yeah, so that's where we would end this for now. About the material, definitely you are going to get a copy of all the presentations as well as the recording. Everything will be recorded and you will also get the presentation materials, the slides, so you can practice at the end of the day. I hope that is fine as well. Okay. 
with that, we will now be moving, let me share the program of events so we can also see that as well. You we can see that as well. Okay, great. So I believe we're also seeing the program of events right now. Please let me know if you see it. Okay. Let me know if you see the program of events, please. Okay, great. This is also going to be sent to your emails. Please look out for it shortly, especially during the break session. It's going to be sent. Okay, so we have, okay. So here's just a rundown of the program. Um, we are, we've done the opening ceremony where we had a welcome address by the um, lead facilitator, Prof Mbe Inja, and we also had a keynote address by the VC. Um, Vice Chancellor University of Calabar, Professor Florence B. O. B. Um, now the technical sessions is where we are in right now. We've done the climate setting, the ground rules. The this program is divided into three themes. The first theme is titled Techniques of Writing Grant Attracting Proposals. Under this theme, you're gonna learn about the object of grant writing, which is what you have learned right now. Um, we're also going to learn shortly, learning the language of grant writing. That's going to be handled by Professor Regina Wadiaro. And then there'll be question and answers. Already we're taking some of the questions and answers already, just so we can, we can limit the time. And then there'll be a break. Um, and after the break, we'll take the last session for today, which is going to be literature review. Remember, if I said if you have questions on literature review, you can ask them in that session as well. Literature review, significance and rationale. So Professor Regina Ejemotuadero will also handle that. Then we'll wrap up for today. Tomorrow, which is day two, we'll have a continuation of the first theme. And um, that is gonna, we'll have a recap of what we'll discuss today. And then we'll go on into budgeting and budget management. This is a deep one. This is a deep one. You don't wanna miss this session. And then we'll move on to the second theme. The second theme of this workshop is titled grant sourcing techniques and donor link identification. I also saw questions on donors and donor links. Do not worry, that is covered as well in this workshop. Under this um, theme, you're going to learn how to identify sources of funding that will be handled by Professor Nja. We'll also, um, yeah, you also get to ask a lot of questions about it. And then we would be opportune to have um, a goodwill message from the director of the Directorate of Research and Development from the University of Calabar in person of Professor Igri Basi Yokun. Then another um, topic that will be handled on that theme too will be preparing for grant application. So at this point, just get ready to you know, roll up your sleeves to start <laughs> working on your grant application if there are some you're already eyeing at the moment. Okay, and then we'll move on to skills in assessing funding opportunities. That would be handled by Professor Mbe Inja as well. And then we'll wrap up after taking your questions and answers. Day three would start with a recap of what was discussed in day two. And then the main theme for day three is online visibility for grant seekers. Of course, that's where um, Julia John Yang is gonna handle becoming visible as a grant seeker, part one. Just after that, Professor um, Peter Okafor, the Director of Unical External Relations and Linkages, would give us a goodwill message as well. And then we'll take on part two, which is of the, of the, of the topic, becoming visible as a grant seeker. Um, so this is also an opportunity for you to learn how to sell yourself out there as a grant seeker. So just come prepared for that session as well. And then, We'll take questions and answers. The closing and vote of thanks will be given by Professor Mbe Inja. And finally, if you had looked at your email, the last email you received, we said there's going to be a post-training survey. There's going to be a post-training survey. So right after the whole workshop, you will receive a post-training survey. And then more information on how to get your certificates will be mailed to you. So always, always, always keep an eye on your email address. Thank you so much. So at this point, we are going to 
move on to the next session, which is to be handled by Professor Regina Ejemotwadiaro. But before she, but before she she takes that, I just want us to take one or two minutes to stretch, just stretch, stretch. You know, just walk around. I mean, sitting down for too long. I'm not in the medicals. Professor Regina can explain more about the consequence of sitting for too long. <laughs> She's in the health department. So, um, but just stretch. I just advise that you stand up, stretch a bit, stretch a bit, and get ready for the next session. So we just have two minutes for that. And Professor Regina would be ready with her presentation. Thank you so much. Please use the Q&A box if you have questions. I'm keeping an eye on that. All right, thank you so much.